There are many types of air conditioner, but today we are going to talk about the most common type of air conditioner, which is the split air conditioner. So what is split air conditioner? Split air conditioner is most commonly used in residential application, like it's our home air conditioner. Their capacity is usually on the low side, around 9,000 BTU to up to 5 ton. So the 5 ton unit is about 60,000 BTU. Those are for, we call it the centralized split air conditioner. One 5 ton unit supply the whole house. The characteristic of split air conditioner, they call it the split because they have two separate units. The indoor unit inside the house and the outdoor unit outside the house. The non-split air conditioner is something we call the package unit, right? It's the window air conditioner or the portable air conditioner, right? Just one body, they are compact two in one. Split air conditioner in certain country, we only do cooling like Malaysia, Singapore, other country like United States, they have, we call it the mini split heat pump, right? They can do both cooling and also heating. And there are two types of split air conditioner. One is we call the single split. Another one is the multi split, all right? Single split is the one to one and the multi split is one to many. In some country, they call it the single zone and the multi zone. So split air conditioner in engineering, sometimes people call it the DX split, the direct expansion, what it's called direct expansion. We use the refrigerant directly inside the room to cool the room, right? Uh, conversely, indirect expansion means we have a secondary coolant. Maybe we use water, right? We use the refrigerant to cool the water, then we send the water inside the room to cool the room, right? This is, we call it indirect expansion. A split air conditioner, generally we have the indoor unit, but we call it the evaporator, right? You can see here, install inside the room and outdoor unit is outside, then we call it the condenser. Why we call this is because if you have listened to my previous video, we call it evaporate because it evaporates the refrigerant. This is where the refrigerant go through the evaporation process, the boiling process, and here obviously the condensation process. After these two units, they are connected via a refrigerant pipe. This refrigerant pipe usually is copper, we use copper, and because the evaporation process, it makes the heat exchanger very cold below the dew point of the air. So that's why here, they have this dehumidification. So there will be condensate water dripping here inside. That's why we need a drain pipe to discharge the condensate water. The whole drain pipe and the refrigerant pipe is cold. Then we need insulation to cover it up so that we, we don't waste energy. When we talk about split air conditioner or the mini split, the typical indoor unit will be the warm outer unit. Some people in the Europe side, right, they just call split air conditioner as wall mounted unit or wall mounted air conditioning unit. This is the physical appearance. I'm sure many of us have seen this before and when you open it up, you can see this is the flap where, where you turn it on, it will open and this is the basic filter, just a plastic filter. If you look closely, there's a fan blower. So if we dismantle it, you can see here, here is the heat exchanger we talk about, right? Fin tube heat exchanger. And here is the tray for the drain water. And you can see, this is the pipe where the drain pipes have to connect. Over here, I would say most of the indoor unit, there is a temperature sensor. So basically the indoor unit is a temperature sensor. It's a thermostat, you can see it that way. Sometimes they use thermostat to sense the temperature, right? In the commercial sector, we use thermostat the thermostat itself is a temperature sensor to control the air conditioner. But now, the indoor unit itself, there is a temperature sensor. That's why the location of the indoor unit is very important. If you put the indoor unit at the corner, not only the air distribution is not nice, but the temperature sensor is not reading the actual average temperature of the room. That's why you get this not enough cooling or too much cooling because the Temperature sensor is at the wrong location. It's just like you place the thermostat at the wrong location. Usually the indoor unit has to be placed somewhere at the center of the room. If you further dismantle the whole indoor unit, we can see that we have the cover. Then here is the fan blower and the plastic filter. Here this is the, precisely this is the evaporator. The heat exchanger, right? Fin and tube. You can see the refrigerant pipe actually connect here. Send the refrigerant into the copper tube, then the blue color is aluminum fin. Why is blue color? Because uh, usually they coat it, they call it the hydrophilic coatings. Basically it's like 
improve the anti-corrosion uh, property of the fin. Uh. Sometimes you see O1 is about like black color because they never cut it. So this is the basic cover. Uh. And so this is how it works. Uh. Air goes from the top and coming from the bottom. Uh. So there's other form factor like maybe uh, bottom go in, up come out. This is what a uh, warm water unit typically look like. And also the positioning, the up, up down is very important, particularly in the top part. You want to have some gap so that you don't choke the return air and also you want to open the cover ma. All right. so come back to the operation during cooling mode just now i show you is the indoor side so we call it the evaporator right this is a basic refrigeration cycle right so here is the indoor unit and all these three components is the outdoor unit if you are familiar with r22 the older model of uh, air conditioner right the expansion valve actually is belongs to the indoor unit, right? But now the new R four one zero R thirty two, right? These three components, including the expansion valve, is everything is inside the outdoor unit. An outdoor unit looks something like this. It can be bigger, more capacity. Sometimes you can see dual fan, two fan, right? This is a single fan one, right? So if you open it up inside, actually also very simple. Like we have a a big XL fan, right? And a big this is what heat exchanger again, the condenser, fin and tube again. And inside here, there's two black color cylinder. One is the compressor. Now it's a accumulator. Lah. This one, maybe uh, next time only I explain, but basically the major component is the compressor. And somewhere inside there, there's a expansion valve. Now they usually is the electronic expansion valve. Lah. This is the outdoor unit. Now we are talking about cooling operation, right? We call it evaporator condenser, indoor unit, because we are mentioning in cooling. What about heating, right? Mini split, the heat pump version, we have the mini split heat pump, right? The heat pump, how it works. So during the heating operation, we just simply flip it, right? You flip the entire system, then the indoor unit now becomes the condenser, the outdoor unit becomes the evaporator. So how the heating operation, how we going to achieve this? Here is a schematic diagram lah, on the outdoor unit of this uh, typical split air conditioner. This diagram is included the necessary valve for heating. So we have the compressor, heat exchanger, expansion valve. So for heat pump, we have this extra four-way valve or they like to call it the reversing valve, right? Not necessarily it look like a round, but maybe it's a header with a few tubes. Basically, if you divert different different direction of the refrigerant. So let's see how a normal cooling mode works, right? So you all start from a compressor, hot refrigerant, right? Coming out and first thing goes to the four-way valve. So the four-way valve, this already adjusted to the cooling mode. So now the refrigerant will flow this direction, goes to the heat exchanger first. In this case, this will be the condenser. Now the, all this is gas, right? So we want to condense it back to liquid. So here, back to liquid. Then, like just now I said, the new version, the new air conditioner is expansion valve is inside the outdoor unit. Immediately, we go through the expansion process, then send the cold refrigerant to the indoor unit. That's why you see, last time, there's two pair of uh, refrigerant tube. One is insulated, another one is not insulated. Because the expansion valve is at the indoor unit, that's why the gas sent to the indoor unit is still hot. That's why you no need to insulate. But now, you need to insulate both refrigerant tube. This one, go to the indoor unit, then come back, still cold, but it's already evaporated. Liquid, then become mixture, goes to the evaporator, the indoor unit, come back. Here is everything is gas already. Alright, then spin, Go back to the compressor, right? Now, you press the remote controller, we switch to heat mode, right? What will happen? Same thing happen. We compress the hot refrigerant first, then we go to the four-way valve. But this time, the four-way valve will turn so that the hot refrigerant gas will straight away go to the indoor unit. What happened at the indoor unit? Condensation. That's why the indoor unit now becomes the condenser and it's condensing the refrigerant. Then, the hot 
refrigerant comes back, goes through the expansion process. Expand, then we go through this heat exchanger. This is now what? Become the evaporator. That's why heat pump, they can absorb heat from the ambient air, from the outdoor air, because we go through the expansion process, this very cold, so this can absorb heat from the ambient air. So, the thing reverse, and comes back to the compressor. So this is how the heating mode works. So if you are referring to split without the heat mode one, you don't have this one, no? So it's straight one process only. So just now we are talking about, there's two type of split air conditioner. One is single split, and now we talk about the multi-split, right? So single split is very simple, ma. one to one, right? Multi-split is one to many, no? Immediately we can see space saving is the first benefit of this kind of system. And second thing is, we look at the system, we feel it's more clean, right? One outdoor unit, right? Everything is more neat, more clean. But actually, the system is actually more complex. So when we talk about split versus multi-split, right? The difference is inside the outdoor unit. The multi-split indoor unit doesn't have much difference. It's just a few electronics different, but the inside system is the same. When we talk about multi-split, it is all about the outdoor unit. Out of the characteristic of multi-split system, one of the most, I would say, easier for design engineer to, to miss up right, during the design process to make a mistake, I would say, right, is the capacity sharing property. For example, here is a 5 kilowatt outdoor unit. All right? The capacity of outdoor unit is 5 kilowatt. But here they say the total capacity of connected indoor unit is 8.5 kilowatt, up to 8.5. That means the total capacity of indoor unit can be 8.5 kilowatt when you pair with the 5 kilowatt outdoor unit. So why is that, right? The indoor unit capacity is more than the outdoor. A lot of young engineer, they see this, they thought, oh, right, this outdoor unit can handle 8.5 kilowatt. Or maybe the sales engineer, you know, like mistakenly tell you that, oh, this thing is, can handle up to 8.5 kilowatt. But he or she never explained the context behind, right? What's the requirement to achieve 8.5? So in this case, for example, if you pair this unit with 252535, this 25 actually 2.5 kilowatt, which is the one horsepower or 9,000 BTU. Then this is the 12,000 BTU unit, right? So 9,000, 9,000 and 12,000, right? 2.5, 2.5, 3.5. So this three actually is 8.5 already. So what will happen if you run three indoor units simultaneously? Here, the table will show you the capacity actually dropped from 2.5, dropped to 1.45, right? It's like almost half. So if the room actually needs 9,000 or 7,000 BTU, but now it's become like, how much? 5,000 BTU. So Either you have complaint on like cooling so slow or insufficient cooling, right? Then you have problem. Even though multi split have uh, this inverter technology, inverter driven, right? It can ramp up. Rated is five kilowatt, but the maximum it can goes uh, is six point two kilowatt. If we just divide it proportionally, yeah, uh, let's say you run at maximum, right? You you push this unit push to one hundred twenty percent capacity max already you still can't get the original 2.5. So if you, like, now you're connecting to three unit, right? For example, if you run just one unit, no problem. You can get exactly 2.5 kilowatt because the capacity is five kilowatt. The problem comes when your customer, when you design this system, the customer run three unit simultaneously. Then all three rooms will not be powerful enough. This kind of system, actually, they play around with the diversity factor. When we design this kind of system, we must understand that this system, actually, they are meant for certain usage behavior. For example, if you connect this three unit to one five kilowatt uh, multi-speed, right? You must expect or you must know that this kind of behavior applicable, which is like, this is a living room, this is the bedroom. So here, we have, we have assumption, we say, when you are using the living room, you are not using the bedroom. So that's why you only turn on one unit, then this two is off. Then 3.5 kilowatt pair with five, you have enough capacity. At night, you switch off the 
living room and you go to the bed then you run this tool 2.5 2.5 you get 5 so if your customer is able to behave this way then you can design such a slightly undersized outdoor unit otherwise you need a 8.5 kilowatt outdoor unit you cannot use a 5 kilowatt outdoor unit if they suddenly go and turn on three together then three also will not enough uh, cooling this is something if we want to design multi-split you must understand how this thing works so split air condition actually is a very flexible uh, type of air conditioner and they have many, many different design right especially the indoor unit outdoor unit all the same but indoor unit they have different different design the first we always see the warm outer run right in the us they call it the ductless mini split by default is warm outer unit but then we have four-way cassette this kind of unit is more elegant they have four airflow direction usually we can install at the center of the room if your room is square uh, then this unit is very good but if your room is like a bit rectangle or right? a bit rectangle and you still don't want this one maybe you can try one-way ceiling cassette right just one side throughout the whole thing is still concealed above the ceiling but this unit not every manufacturer they have quite rare like this one right? another common one is the floor mounted unit you know? another one is the we call it the ceiling suspended or ceiling exposed this one is able to deliver more airflow because the form factor is bigger and we see usually used in something like commercial restaurant right kitchen because this thing is quite noisy one some manufacturer they combine these two right they allow you to install the floor mounted unit like the ceiling suspended right quite creative lah. they allow two installation method then uh, also the rare one is the floor standing some manufacturer they offer that and sometimes people also call it the air handler because this unit is already very big start from a very big size mini split actually like split or mini split actually can be ducted right a lot of people they say ductless ductless but there is one unit specifically for ducted they got a ceiling ducted or ceiling concealed the whole thing will be installed above the ceiling then use a normal duct to deliver but one thing to bear in mind is this is different from the central air handler because this they don't have the fans static pressure is not that high so you cannot install very very long duct and expect the air to deliver the fan don't have such strength and lastly the another type of split air conditioner is traditional split this one mostly in the united states lah, right they call it the central air traditional split this one is because they need furnace previously a heat pump cannot work at very very cold temperature now they can but last time they need furnace they need to burn natural gas propane gas right so this is a basic system of the furnace when you need cooling you just install this unit and you hook up just the coil just the evaporator coil you select a proper evaporator coil you just install above it then during heating mode then you ignore this one you just use the furnace to heat lah. then when you need cooling then this one will stop then this will act like a normal air handler right this is how they combine the two systems so that's all for split air conditioner